Well, glory, are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen, amen. amen. It's so good to see each and every one of you here today in the house of the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Just repeat this after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I have what it says I have. Today, I will be taught the Word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is open and receptive to God's Word. Do you believe that? Say amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me get over here to uh, what I'm ministering. I'm going to continue to what we started out with three weeks ago. I could probably just start all over. Sister Donna told me one time in the conference room, she was, um, I was sharing with her some things God laid on my heart. And, and, uh, and I said, well, I said, I'm about to preach my message. She said, well, that's all right. She said, they probably won't remember it anyway. Just go ahead. <laughs> hey, praise God. But I do hope you remember it today. Amen. I want to talk about how to develop your faith. I think pretty much every message that I ministered uh, has something to do with faith. The Bible talks about strong faith. He talks about little faith. He talks about no faith. He talks about great faith. In other words, when he says that, mentions about faith in the Bible, he talks about there's different levels of faith, and one of the things that you and I have to locate is where we are at spiritually. Something I've come to understand and learn is that you minister to people where they are at. That is, at their level of faith, because this. We, let's understand something, that all of us are not on the same level of faith. Somebody say amen. amen. And the reason I teach so much about faith, because one of the things the Bible says, we're justified by faith. The Bible says that we're healed by faith, that we live by faith, that we fight the good fight of faith. Somebody say Amen. The Bible says that we live by faith and, and uh, we, we move, faith moves mountains. How many of you know that? Amen. It takes faith to move mountains. And your faith will deliver the promise that you are believing God for. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Number one, and I just want to just, re, uh, just do a little recap of what we talked about three weeks ago. Number one, if you're taking notes today, your faith will never rise above the knowledge that you have of the Word of God. Your faith will never rise above the knowledge that you have of the Word of God. You want to go to the next level of faith? The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing of the Word of God. That's why the Bible said, you, you know, we're to get wisdom, but in all you're getting, get understanding. Somebody say amen. amen. In other words, he's talking about revelation knowledge. When you read, have you ever read the Word of God, you know, you'd be reading something, you say, wow, I got it, that's it. See, the Bible says the, the entrance of your Word is light. In other words, it's revelation. You walk, what do you do when you walk into your house when it's dark? You turn on a light so you can what? See. Amen. And that's what the Word of God does. I, I was teaching the youth this past Wednesday night, and I, I told them, I said, one of the things I begin to understand about the Word of God is, is that the more I read it, the hungrier I become for the things of God. And that's something that we need to get back to, church, is reading the Word of God, meditating on the Word of God, because, you see, he said in Hosea, and I'm, I'm going to uh, quote just a few scriptures, but in Hosea 4, 6, he said the very first part of that, 
He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Wow. Do you know the word destroyed there in the Hebrew? It means to cut off. Being ignorant of the things of God will cause you to be cut off from the benefits of God. Oh yeah, there's blessings that await the body of Christ that we don't know that we have. But us entering into the Word of God daily. Remember the Brian Church, the Bible says they did what? Search the Scriptures daily. Not just when we're in a crisis. Somebody say, oh me. <laughs> Amen. Matthew 21. And just for the sake of time here, look at verse 21. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, One of the very things that will rob you of the blessings of God is to doubt God's word. But there's a cure for doubt. There's a cure for unbelief. And it can be obtained by taking your medicine. This here's your medicine. Matter of fact, Proverbs says those that find it that in the word there's life to all those that find it. Watch this. And he said health unto all their flesh. Think about that. Could we use some medicine this morning? I don't know about you but I need my daily dose of medicine. Sometime more than one time, but are you listening to me? Because, see, that's what, you know, the doctors sometimes, you know, they'll say, well, just take this, you know, once a day. Sometimes they take it, take, take it twice a day or three times a day. Sometimes, you, you know, to keep me sound, I have to take it several times a day. Somebody say amen. amen. But he said it's health, it's medicine. To all of, of your flesh. Now why is the word so important? Listen to me. You remember over in Acts 19 and 2. And I'm going to quote there and we're going to look at, look at the rest of this here passage. In Matthew 21. You remember the scripture says in Acts 19 2. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Never even heard of it. I know when I pastored many years ago at Cornerstone, I had, I, I, had, I, I, want, I had one young man that was raised up in the church to become a minister, and his, actually his dad was a minister. And um, I, I won't say what denomination, because I, I don't want to sound like I'm being derogatory towards it, but I'm just using it as an example. He asked me one day after service, he came up to the altar and he said, Pastor, can I, can I talk with you for just a couple of minutes? He said, I, I, I've got some questions. He said, you know, my dad was a pastor all my life, even before I came into this world. And he said, what you're teaching is in the Bible. He said, I fought alone. He said, I, I, I was kind of skipped it when I came here, you know, because I was always in a certain denomination and, and this being a non-denominational church, Pentecostal, charismatic in nature, you, you know, he said, I, I, I was kind of, you know, just set back for a while and just see what you was teaching. But he said, you know, everything you teach, he said, I have followed right along in the Word with you. And he said, it's in the Bible. He said, but I never heard my dad teach it.
There's so many blessings, so many benefits that we forfeit because we don't read the Word. Oh, not even to mention how vital it is to be in the house of God. Even Long Ranger had Tonto. <laughs> you know the scripture says, forsaking not the assembling of yourself together as the manner of somehow. You know what happens? We depart from the faith. You know, I've noticed something. I another story from then. I had a lady in the church that started coming to church. And uh, later on, had, I had led her to the Lord. And I noticed one Wednesday night, she didn't come. Then I looked out in the crowd, and I noticed Sunday morning, she didn't come. I said, hmm. Sunday night, she didn't come. So, come Monday, you know, back then, you know, you pastors did a lot of visiting, knocking on doors. And I went and I just wanted to make sure everything was okay. And she said, there's, there's not anything wrong. She said, I, I, just, I got busy Wednesday and I, I just kept, you, you know, doing what I was doing and I decided not to come. And same thing, something else come up Sunday and then Sunday night, same thing. I said, well, let me ask you. I said, what, how do you feel when you miss the services? She said, I, you, you, you know, she said, Pastor, she said I, said, she said, I was so convicted. She said, I knew, she said, I really need to get done what I needed to get done. She said, but you know, when I think about it, she said, it could have waited. She said, I really just put it before God. She said, I was convicted. She said, but I'm going to be honest with you. She said, you know something? She said, after I win, missed that Wednesday service and Sunday morning and Sunday night, she said, it just, she said, every time I missed the service, it just got easier. Because we're creatures of habit. Am I helping anybody today? Don't allow the enemy to steal your blessing. Because I believe that there's things here today. I, I, I don't believe in one moment for, in coincidence. I believe that before I was even consumed in my mother's womb and you also that are here. That God had a word in season for you that would encourage you, that would speak to you in some way. That's going to benefit you. But they said, we've not even, even heard of the Holy Ghost. And you know why a lot of times you don't hear things taught in church like that young man that meant so well, I mean so sincere in his heart, wanting to learn of the things of God. And he became a minister in the church. You can't teach what you don't know. We have a master electrician here in our, our church, and he, I don't know. <laughs> you know why I know? Because I never applied the effort to learn about electricity. I just want the, I just want the lights to come on when I flip the switch. <laughs> if I got any problems, I call the electrician. Amen. Jesus answered and said unto them, Matthew 21 and 21 again, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do that which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. There's something there 
you know, something I, I've learned from the teachings of Brother Hagen, you know, over the years, and I, I first started listening to him back, you know, early on, I mean, after I was born again, uh, began to listen to his cassette tapes back then. I know some of you probably don't even know what a cassette tape is now, you know. But Brother Hagen didn't mind repeating things. That's how you learn is through repetition. Amen. And he said, if you would say, see, faith and confession go hand in hand. They're connected together. You cannot separate the two. You remember blind Bartimaeus, it just come to me in my spirit. Blind Bartimaeus sitting by the wayside begging for bread. He heard that Jesus was passing by and he began to scream out, Jesus! And the crowd said, shh. They tried to hush him. There's something I want you to catch in this now. And the Bible said he cried a lot of, Jesus! They said, don't bother him. But he cried a lot. He didn't have a sight. But he had his voice. That's why the enemy's trying to silence the church. Jesus heard his cry for help. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. For you have thought that I have not heard your cry. Your tears upon your pillow at night. But know this, my child. As the sparrow falls to the ground, and I've noticed, I've took notice, of your tears, and I have heard your cry. You are not alone, for I am with you, saith the Spirit of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know who that was, but God does. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, I have a voice. Now look at verse 22, and he says, And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Do you see that in the Word of God there? Now, you know, I I, I just happened to look up the word all things. You know what all things mean in the Greek and Hebrew? Somebody say, wow. Say it backwards. Think about that. He said all things, not some of the things that you're believing for. If you can find the promise in the Word of God, you can believe God for it. He said everything that I promised you, anything, all things that you can find in my Word, Pertaining to you, he said, if you can believe for it, you can have it. You see how important faith is? Somebody say amen. Amen. You remember over in the book of Matthew, and you don't don't have to turn out, just jot it down. You can read it later, but over in Matthew in chapter 14, you remember over in verse 28 through 31, 
you know, when Jesus walked on the water towards the boat, the ship, where the disciples were. And remember, there was a storm that arose up. And I mean that when it was beaten against that ship. I mean, they feared for their life, the Bible says. Fear's a thief. But there's a cure for it. And it's the word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And remember, you know, Peter, he stood up in the boat and he said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come to you. And Jesus said, come. Somebody say one word. One word. Say it again, say one word. one word. I'm telling you there's enough of power in one word from God to hold you up to deliver you, to break the chains of darkness off of your life, to heal your spirit, soul, and body. Amen. To bring immense wealth into your house. Are are you listening? One word, if you'll act upon it. And you remember what Peter did. The Bible said, He come down out of the boat, out of that ship. He stepped down on the water. And the Bible says that he began to walk towards Jesus. Think about that for a moment. One word. And he began to walk on water. Now the Bible says because the wind was boisterous. It was contrary that he began to sink. Stay with me because there's hope here. Somebody said there's hope. Now watch this. The Bible says the moment he began to sink immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him. Need to look up that word called. It means help or to take hold of. Aren't you glad? Listen to me. The Bible went on to say, let let me go ahead and finish. The, The Bible said that he went on to say, that he cried out to Jesus and said, Save me. At the moment he cried out to Jesus, Jesus took over. My God in heaven. When your situation is hopeless, there is hope in God. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, my hope hope is in God. God. Aren't you glad that the story didn't end the way it looked like it was going to end? It looked like all hope was lost. It looked like Peter would drown. It looked like his life was over. But he cried out to Jesus. There's something that's amazing. That I was reading these pastors' scripture this morning before I left. And then uh, they come back to me after I got here. Then I went with, in uh, Amber's office and I opened it back up to them. And I was reading that. And, and I began to think about that word help. No matter what level of faith you are on, Jesus will help you. Something else I saw in that passage of scripture. He never left Peter. Jesus said he would never leave thee nor forsake thee. Somebody say amen. Amen. Number two, we talked about, said all things are subject to change. We see over and over when Jesus was involved 
in different people's life, their circumstances, their situations, that things changed. Somebody say amen. amen. Number three, you can go back and get the tapes or watch it on YouTube. Number three, take heed to what you hear. Mark 4, 24 says, and be sure to put into practice what you hear. The more you do this, the more you will understand what I tell you. That's living Bible translation. I want to say that again. And be sure to put into practice what you hear. The more you do this, the more you will understand what I am telling you. Luke 8, 18 says, take heed, therefore, how you hear. Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody and, and they misunderstood what you said? I mean, they told this one, you know, well, Pastor Don said this, and, and that's not what I meant. Oh, I heard Pastor Ken and Sister Donna say such and such. They misunderstood. Take heed to how you hear. Somebody say Amen. He said, for whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not from him shall be taken, even that which seems he seems to have. Now look at the last part of that scripture. The more you apply the word of God to your life, the more revelation you receive. Isn't that amazing? And I cannot emphasize enough the importance of hearing and hearing and hearing God's word. Faith is hazardous to doubt. It's dangerous to unbelief. Somebody say amen. It's detrimental to fear. Faith will eradicate the impossible. Oftentimes what happens is that we get over into the arena of time. This is very important. I want you to catch this and I'm going to close. If you get focused on time, everybody say time. time. It will take you out of the arena of faith. Yes, it will. Yes. See, some of our frustrations and weariness comes from the waiting process. That's exactly right. Because we're looking at time. Everybody say time. That's right. If you will stay in faith, what would normally take years to accomplish can happen in a moment's notice. Somebody say amen. amen. Faith will not only speed up the process, but faith says... I can make it happen now. Everybody say now. now. Just because there's a delay in the manifestation of the promise of God, it doesn't mean, listen, that it isn't going to happen. Did you catch that? It doesn't mean that your faith's not working. The devil is a deceiver. He's a liar. And he will tell you in your hearing that your faith's not working. Because And then we get off over in the area of time and say, well, you know, he'll say, well, now, look, it hadn't happened. You just stay in faith and watch what God does on your behalf. Because if you keep sowing the seed and watering the seed that you're planting in your heart, down in your soul, you will see it bear fruit. You will see the manifestation of God's promise. Somebody say, stay in faith. Somebody say, amen. Stand to your feet with me. We're going we're to close with this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Did you receive anything today? Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, stay in faith. See, don't get caught up in this time. Well, it hadn't has it happened yet. Well, it's already been three days, you know. It doesn't matter if it's been three years or 30 years. Stay in faith. I've often been told that expectation is the birthing ground of miracles. That's what hope is. Don't lose hope. Don't lose your confidence. Hope in the Greek, it's, it, it simply means earnest expectation that good is going to happen. I believe that good is going to happen. 
No matter what situation it is, no matter how negative, no matter how detrimental it is, I believe that, listen, if I stay in faith, God is going to bring good out of it. Romans 8, 28. Remember what it says? We know. Somebody say, I know. Listen to me. One of the greatest justice you can do for yourself is make the Word of God personal in your own life. Every day I confess the Word of God like He wrote it for nobody but me. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, I know, I know. That, all that all things. Come on. Say it like you really mean. Say, I know, I know. That, all that all things. How many things? All things. How many things? All well, I believe you got it. Work together. See, when the devil says, now where's your God? Just say, he's working. Glory. He's working. He's working on my behalf. He's working good out of it. Oh, what you meant for evil. God's going to bring good out of it. Some I say amen. amen. Keep that in your heart. Keep hope alive. I say keep hope alive. Believe that now faith. My faith is operating now. I'm believing my, for my manifestation now in Jesus' name. Whatever it is you're believing God for, I want you to just take a moment and begin to praise Him that it's already here. Go ahead. How would you praise Him if it already took place in your life? You believe Him for healing in your life? What if you was already healed it manifested? Hallelujah. How would you praise him? How would you praise him? Come on, how would you praise him? If that child that you've been praying for that's lost and undone with Christ, how would you praise him if that child came to know Jesus as Lord and Savior? Come on, praise him in this house. I believe we have a house full of believers here today that my promise is manifesting now. I have now faith in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I have the promise of God now. Now, this is what I want you to do when you begin to leave this place. I want you to walk out of here like it's already done because according to the Word of God, it's already been given to each and every believer in the house of God. All you have to do is believe that you receive. Amen. Confess it with your mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. It is so to your Blind Bartimaeus got it. He couldn't see it in the natural. That's why I said you walk by faith and not by sight. He got it because he cried out for help. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Boy, I am this. My, my. Mm. I hope you learned some lessons today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I believe you can go out in this world and conquer it. Amen. I listen to it. Don't, don't, don't be calling Pastor and Sister Donald next way and say, well, you just wouldn't believe how the devil's attacking me. No, you, you come back in Wednesday night in this service there and praise and prayer. Hallelujah, and say, Pastor, Sister Donna, I've got a praise report. Boy, glory to God, instead of the devil attacking me, coming after me, I went after him. Hallelujah. I put him on the run in Jesus' name because I found out, amen, that when I humble myself before God, when I put my trust in God, when I believe God that I can resist the devil and he's got to go on the run, he's got to flee from me. And my family, somebody say amen.